Greetings everybody and today we're going to be evaluating a very funny looking integral and that's the integral of sine of dx. This is a very exotic over here. We have our dx that's usually at the end of our integrands but now it's stuck inside of this sine function. So the question is, is this even possible to evaluate? And well, the answer is yes, otherwise I wouldn't be making this video over here. And to do so, we will need to do a couple tricks here and there, but it is pretty straightforward. Now, first thing we need to do is understand our dx a little bit better. What exactly is dx? Well, if you take a look at the Riemann sum definition of our integral, um, this integral, it's equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of these Riemann sums over here, um, i going from one to n, for example, of f of xi times delta x. So this gives us, if you imagine some function, if you want to calculate the error underneath it, you can approximate it by a bunch of these a small little rectangles over here. That's not a very good approximation, uh, but yeah, get the idea. Each of the areas of these rectangles is represented by f of xi delta x and in the limit as our n approaches infinity well we're going to get more and more rectangles and each of these delta x's over here the width of each of these rectangles is going to go to zero and that's actually where these dx's come from it's basically the limit as our n approaches infinity on our delta x's over here so our delta x will become our dx's so we have infinitesimals as we increase the number of rectangles so you can think about our dx's over here as just simply a limit as our delta x is over here approaches zero as the width of each of these rectangles approaches zero now how does this help us well if you look at this integral we're kind of missing a dx out the end over here because usually we want to integrate something dx so let's put a dx over here but the problem is we can't just put a dx um, because that's going to basically change the value of everything we also have to divide by dx so this is essentially multiplying by one and why can we do this over here this is looking a bit weird dx over dx well remember dx is just the limit so if you take the limit as delta x over delta x approaches zero well this is just one um, so the limit does indeed exist and we can treat this as kind of like a fraction now we can rearrange a little bit so this becomes the integral of sine of dx divided by dx and i'm going to multiply by the dx out here all right and now i'm going to muck around with the integrands a little bit because remember again what exactly is dx dx is just these delta x's as they approach zero and now we can just take a look at this integrand and interpret it as a limit because this is now the integral of the limit as a delta x approaches zero of the sine of delta x divided by delta x dx so this is all in parentheses over here. And look at this, this is a limit of a sine of something over something as that well, something approaches zero. And this is a well-known limit. This limit actually evaluates to one. And there's a couple ways you can show this limit. You can use geometry um, or something like that. But let's suppose we know what this limit is. It's just a one. So now we're integrating one times dx, um, but well, that's just integrating dx only. Um, so this actually just becomes x plus some constant c. Then we are done. So that's pretty interesting. The integral of the sine of dx is exactly the same thing as the integral of dx, and that just evaluates to x plus c. Um, so that's a pretty exotic looking expression that we started off with, but it actually evaluates to something that we quite well understand. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it interesting. And until next time, have a wonderful day, and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.